I am Linda Jennings from Color Storms. I'm here today with videographer Taylor Crass and we're doing an instructional video about picking up stitches along the edges of a mitered square. Now picking up stitches is not normally a difficult thing for an advanced knitter to do, but the edges here are complex because of uh, garter uh, stitch rows and as long as, as well as slip stitch rows, uh, straight stitch rows. Uh, so I want to go into detail for uh, beginning and even advanced knitters on this technique to knit my miter square vest. Thank you. On my mitered square vest, you can see that I have knit one complete row, two complete rows. And on the third row, I've knit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mitered squares that are completed. And what I'm going to do next is to pick up stitches along the edge of this mitered row so that I can um, knit the, what do they revise, six, seven, the ninth, eighth square. Nine, ten, eleven, yeah, ninth, ninth square. The goal is to pick up 18 stitches along this edge, one at the very tip three in between these four little tiny garter stitch rows, three along these, these edge stitches of the stray stitching, three in between the three rows of garter stitch, um, three more in here, three in between the four rows of garter stitch, and then one more at the very end. So let's do that together. There's the first edge stitch. Now I'm going to pick up stitch two, three, and four from in between the tiny rows of this garter stitch, garter stitch square. And I'm going to pick them up as much as I can from the back stitch. That will give me a little tiny ridge at the top which is going to look like a fake first row, which will be more clear when I'm all done. Try not to split the yarn as you're picking them up. You can see that already some of these edges are the result of your um, slipping the first stitch on your row, which makes a really nice V shape from which to pick up a stitch. It's a little tougher in between the garter stitch rows, but especially along the straight stitch edges. We've got this nice V to pick up a stitch from. And like I said, I picked up the back stitch. So I've got my one edge stitch, three in between the garter stitch edges, and now I'm beginning to pick up. I picked up the first stitch, now the second, third, and actually there are four along this straight stitch edge. There's one, there's the three, and here's the four. Now I'm going to pick up three stitches in between these four garter stitch ridges in between each one. There's the first one. There's the second one. And there's the third one. Sometimes those uh, slip stitch edges present themselves really nicely and other times they don't. So that's why I'm trying to be very precise about what your goal is so that your spacing can be careful um, even if you don't end up picking up um, an exact back stitch from the edge of a nice V slip stitch here. As long as they're spaced out approximately right, then you're fine. So here's the three stitches along the edge of the straight stitch. And now we're going to pick up three again from in between the four rows of garter stitch edges. And 
This one's being a little persnickety. Kind of messy there. If it looks like I've split my yarn a little bit, I'll just take it out and do it over. So I'm going to count them, see if I have 17 on there. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17. And then the last one is at the very bottom after that last garter stitch row. Now I've got 18 stitches picked up. So this is our fake first row. This last stitch is going to be the bottom of the line along your miter stitch, your miter square at, in the middle of the miter square. So that 18 stitches right at the bottom of that. Now I'm going to knit 18 stitches from along my left hand needle. Now this is acting as our first row, so the first thing I'm going to do is knit two together. Begins the pattern where the miter square um, bunches together around the center line by SSK on one side and knit two together on the other. It starts right here at the beginning. Knit two together and then I'm going to purl the rest of the way across. There's 16 purl stitches left and you know you've got to the end of it because you will come to one of your little stitch markers. Once I come to that stitch marker, I'll take it off, give myself a little pat on the back, yay, and pretty much have the miter square all set up. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple more rows with you because there are a little, couple more issues that come up. I have turned the work. I'm now on the wrong side. I'm going to remember to slip that first stitch. It doesn't matter too much whether you have your yarn in front to start with or in back, but I find it a little bit more fluid if I have it in the back. And then I have to bring the yarn to the front, of course, to purl all the way across the back of this piece. You can see that I knit in a continental style, which I find is a little more fluid. Honestly, I use both continental and throwing because there are times when I want to give my left hand a rest and just go ahead and knit throwing with my right hand. That allows me to knit more hours during the day. I figure the more different ways I know how to knit, the more varied I can be and the more I can give my muscles a break. Now of course I'm coming to the place where I had picked up stitches if any of your stitches end up being backwards or twisted, you can just knit through the back loop instead of the front, or purl through the back loop instead of the front loop. These stitches seem to be facing in the right direction, so I'm purling through the front loop as normal. But sometimes when I'm picking up stitches, I find that they are turned. And then in that case, I'll just purl through the back loop instead of the front loop, and everything writes itself. Okay, I'm going to definitely purl that last stitch, turn the work, alright, I'm ready to begin the third row of the mitered square. Remember the first row was picking up the 18 stitches, and then um, knitting two together and then 16 more stitches from the left hand needle. And then we purled across the back for the second row. Now we're ready for the third row. 
going to slip that first stitch as always. That's what creates that nice edge for the next mitered square. If you forget to um, pick up, if you forget to slip that first stitch, it's okay. It'll make it a little harder to pick up the stitches on the edge, but not impossible. If you keep in mind the spacing that I talked about, then you'll be fine. I'm actually going to purl 15 stitches now. At the beginning, it's hard to recognize that center line that we're, that we're decreasing either side of, so I will count 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15. Okay, so I can see there's the center flat row that we're going to decrease either side of. So now we're going to make our first SSK and then knit our center line always. You can see it's starting to form. And then the other side, we knit two together. And some patterns will do a purl SSK and a purl two together. You can try that and see if you like it more. But as a designer, I decided that I really liked this look the best. So it is a knit knitted SSK and he knitted two together. And then we're going to purl the rest of this row, which will be 15 stitches because we've been decreasing. We went from 18 to 17 to 16. But after you SSK, we only have 15 left. Now sometimes when I'm knitting across here at the beginning of this mitered square, I, I can't necessarily see the end of this and the beginning of these stitches, which is going to be the next mitered square, number 10. And if, if you get confused about that, you can just count. Here's the beginning, with the little stitch marker. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Right. So I know I'm at the edge of the mitered square. I will turn it and begin the next row. By the fourth and fifth rows, that mitered stitch edge will show up really well and you won't. This, this other edge will show up really well. It won't be as confusing. So again, we're just going to knit across for row, purl across for row four and at this point, your mitered square is well set up and you can follow the pattern which will tell you exactly which rows to knit and which rows to purl. It can be a little confusing setting up the mitered square, picking up those stitches just right so everything looks nice and tidy. But hopefully this video gave you an idea of how to get that done. And of course, the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And pretty soon, picking up those stitches won't be hard at all. And here you can see, we've got that mitered square well started now. These are the four ridges from the band at the top. And here's our two mitered, two garter ridges, excuse me the center line that we're decreasing around and then the other side and eventually that mitered square will look just like the one beside it. For the last part of this instructional video I'm going to just show you a little bit about picking up stitches along the top because after you have knit your row of mitered squares before you start the next row there is um, a 10 row band in between them. So that requires picking up all the stitches along the top of your mitered rows. Just like along the side, there is a pattern which I hope is made clear. I picked up stitches with this pink yarn to try to make it distinct. And so your goal again is to pick up 18 stitches for each mitered square 
and I like putting stitch markers in between so I only have to count to 18 each time. Even though that means I have to knit 10 rows and slip stitch markers for 10 rows, I'd rather do that and just make the picking up stitches process easier. So here the first stitch is right before this first gartered edge and then there's two more stitches in between the three gartered ridges. Then there's four stitches along the straight stitch edge. Three more stitches in between the four garter rows. Three stitches along this straight stitch section. Four stitches in between the little tiny garter stitch edges. And then lastly, the last one at the top. And that makes 18 stitches. It doesn't have to be precisely that each time, but in case you like precision and you kind of really want to know exactly where to pick up those stitches, that gives you an idea at least of how 18 stitches are going to fit along the top of this mitered square edge. Thank you for watching this instructional video on picking up stitches from the mitered square edge. My name is Linda Jennings from Color Storms. My website is at colorstorms.com. On Ravelry, I am Schrudel, S-C-H-R-O-O-D-L-E, and you can find my recent projects on Instagram. Our videographer today is Taylor Kratz. You can find her pictures at Facebook, Taylor Kratz Photography. Thank you, Taylor, for helping me make this today. Happy knitting!